Welcome. Thank you for viewing this presentation on Jumpstart in your asset management program using a process we call Relative Criticality Assessment. My name is Mark Garlot, and I originally presented this presentation at the Pacific Northwest Clean Water Association Annual Conference in September 2007. I had two co-authors, Paul Proctor, who is the Gresham Wastewater Treatment Plant Manager for Veolia Water, and Alan Johnston, who is a city engineer in charge of the wastewater treatment plant. This presentation will start with a quick overview of asset management concepts to lay a foundation for the relative criticality and how it fits in the overall asset management program. Next, we will discuss the benefits of building a network-based system hierarchy that includes the concept of 100% coverage of all assets and how comparing systems allows a very quick ranking of the relative criticality to be developed. We will discuss the basics of relative criticality processes as it was conducted in the case study from the Gresham Wastewater Treatment Plant. Finally, the last two items will cover some specific examples of how relative criticality analysis led to identification of two systems that are very critical, and yet none of us suspected them prior to the process. Asset management has many definitions, but all have a common set of key objectives. First, there is the concept of level of service, which is really a definition of how the group of assets is expected to function and at what level the system fails to perform its function. The second key concept is that the service is provided in the most cost-effective manner, from acquisition costs through lifetime operating costs down to the disposal cost. The third key is understanding that customers or owners of the assets are satisfied with the level of service or function provided versus the life cycle cost of having that function. Whether you're running a manufacturing facility or operating a municipality or public trust assets, achieving the balance of providing product or service that satisfies the customer for the least total life cycle cost is the objective. Part of the confusion over the definition of asset management comes from the fact that there are different tiers of implementation. This slide nicely demonstrates those tiers. The top tier, which is most often discussed in the literature and seminars, incorporates the strategic requirements for successful implementation. This level includes taking input from the various stakeholders including management, customers, and regulators. It also includes building consensus on the objectives of the asset management program between upper management and the departments formalizing them into a strategic plan that includes an agreed upon vision for the program. Once an agreed upon plan is in place, the second tier or tactical planning components can begin to be implemented. This plan would include review and changes of departmental policies, supplier contracts, and cultural changes. The tactical plan establishes a supporting framework within which the implementation of the asset management program can be carried out. The third tier is the operational planning where the field level implementation actually takes place. This operational plan should include the specific plans for the procurement, operation, maintenance, and retirement of all assets. A complete life cycle perspective where everything from the energy required to operate the asset to the staff required to maintain it can be accounted for in the analysis. The life cycle decisions are data intensive process so the operational plan includes developing and implementing a data collection system which typically implies a range of information technology tools including a computerized maintenance management system or CMMS. The focus of this presentation will be on the third tier operational planning and the methods of quickly beginning to make cost-effective life cycle decisions by focusing on the most relative critical systems using a very simple approach. This diagram highlights the many interactions of the modules on the third tier or operational plan. While all these are ultimately important to an organization that is growing an asset management program, we have found that it is important to also include in the plan a strategy that gives a quick start and show success early in the program. For Gresham at the wastewater treatment plant, the relative criticality assessment provided that quick start. The red line starting in the upper left hand corner traces the path 
of the modules that will quickly yield results by bringing focus to the most critical systems and assets. The line proceeds down to the lower center, highlights the steps and actions of the plan where decisions are made about the first assets to receive attention and investment to reduce the risk of not providing the desired level of service. Once these priorities are established, you can plan for and achieve a quick and tangible success.